Disgaea 5 Alliance of Vengeance is a fantastic tactics game that came out for the PS4 last year. Now, I know what you're thinking. You like your PS4 and tactics and fantastic things, so why haven't you heard of this? Well, the answer might be that Disgaea is as mad as a bag of bats. Like Monster Hunter or Armored Core, it's an example of a weird game that sold and then proceeded to evolve in sequel after sequel, but evolving within the first game's bizarre vision, like a tree growing inside a phone box. Disgaea games are set in a cartoony vision of hell, and Disgaea 5, which is a prequel, sees you fighting a rebellion against a big bad who wants to enslave all the netherworlds. If I was looking for a positive adjective to describe the game's script, I might reach for the word long. Honestly, the entire game reads like fan fiction. It's so bad that if I were in a pub with these characters, I would leave. There's a whole chapter which is literally them fighting over a curry. Story is not what you play Disgaea for, in other words. You play Disgaea because it's a statistical playground. You know how in most tactics games you're trying to fight safely and level people up and equip things? Well, let's start with the fact that in Disgaea you level up individual powers on every character. So your wizard casts wind and then in addition to the wizard leveling up, the wizard's wind levels up. So every character is hosting all these other little things that are leveling up and this is a new World of Warcraft knew this. But while MMOs tend to do this to try and kite your attention over months, Disgaea is perfectly happy to just hand the nose bag of drugs to you. Every time you buy or sell anything, you level up the item shop. If a character dies and you revive them, you might get an item for being a valued customer of the hospital. Level up a class enough, you get another class. You know how XCOM has four classes, right? Well, Disgaea 5 has 44. Or 47 if you want to spring for the DLC, and that doesn't include all of the story characters that you're working with. Now, you can only have 12 people with you on any given mission, so what is the point of having all these different classes? I'll tell you what the point is. Any unit you like can be reincarnated at level 1 again as any different class with better stats and skills. So you can take someone from level 1 to level 9999, Back to one, and then back to 9999 nine, nine again. Except for Thursday, because Thursday's a robot. I'm not finished. Don't want to level up a character? Don't have to, mate. There is literally a section of your base where you can send off units in rockets to play Disgaea themselves. And you can check on how they're doing, and they'll come back with items and experience. Oh god, let's talk about items. If you want to make any item in Disgaea better, whether it's a crossbow or a chocolate bar, you can enter it you can enter a chocolate bar. This creates a giant item universe within that item where the deeper you get, the more you can bend the item statistics. You can also find weird buffs that the item might happen to have, then beat the shit out of them, and then put them in a farm and breed them. Let me repeat that, because there's no way that sank in the first time around. You can go into items, take their buffs, put them in a paddock, and rear them as pets. Don't like anything about these systems? Lobby to change them at an interplanetary council of demons. You can ask for better items in the shop, uh, double mana in your next fight, triple XP, or bringing actual literal cheats into the level, which are like demons. You can lobby to change a character's name, which is good because earlier I was making this guy and the random name generator came out with inverted pencil. Disgaea is just systems all the way down, like Satan's layer cake. Uh, what have I forgotten? Magic change. Some units that you can field are monsters, and monsters can magic change into a weapon that is then held by someone else. And as they hit things with the monster, both them and the monster level up. What do you happens if you magic change while you've already got a magic chain monster? You dual magic change for an extra powerful magic change that multiplies the magic change power of uh, the monster. There's also squads, prisoners, evilities, alchemies, and the curry kitchen, though I'm not going to talk about them. Not because they're any less batshit, but because we have to stop somewhere. So you get the idea. Disgaea is a writhing snake pit of systems except nice snakes, all of them competing for your affection, and you pick one up and play with it for a bit. Put it down. Improving your team one tiny variable at a time. In other words, it's football manager but with more demons and probably about the same amount of curry. Here's my example of what Disgaea does to you. So I played it a while back and I played it for long enough that my body felt like it was full of syrup and then I turned off the PS4 and as I was walking away, 
I realized that while I wasn't leveling up a maid class, so I couldn't unlock any of the new maid classes, I could lobby to have the subclass of my protagonist changed to a maid, so he was technically a maid and leveling up a maid subclass, and then I'd unlock the new maid classes. So I sat back down and turned on the PS4 and turned, went through the whole stuff again, turned it back on just to equip this one thing so I could have more things that I didn't even want. Here's the crazy part though. Disgaea makes sense. Humans like fiddling with systems. It's what powers RPGs. So why not have 10 times as many systems to fiddle with? Why not have it so that when you finish a level, you can't decide which sub menu to go into first? The results speak for themselves. Disgaea's hell is addictive as hell. It's also unlike anything you've ever played, I guarantee. You see, when you give the player this many variables to tweak, there's nothing to stop them, for example, pouring all their time and attention into a single unit until they're half woman, half battleship. Nothing stops you from grinding until the main campaign seems easy. And absolutely nothing stops you from ignoring half of this guy's mechanics and muddling through the game anyway. And you know what? Turns out that's fine. Partially because the game's absurd universe totally supports anything you might want to do, from creating an army of moths to obliterating bosses in one hit, but it's also fine because freedom is not as bad as game designers have come to think it is. I remember talking to the creative director of the LEGO games about cheats, because cheats have fallen out of favour, but they're still in every LEGO game that's shipped because kids love them and they focus test really well, and similarly, Disgaea really does let you cheat the game into whatever you want to play. You can bend the very integers of the systems until the game plays how you want it to. And honestly, that feels great. Feels just as good as popping on invincibility mode in a platformer when I was a kid and just breezing through the level. But an adult kind of version of that. You know what? If the main campaign's too easy, I can send my best fighters off in a rocket to play by themselves. It's fine. It's also fine because just as you're starting to master the systems behind making your units punch like literal freight trains, Disguise campaign starts throwing you curveballs. You play with the mechanics, the mechanics start playing with you. You encounter units with crazy resistances, weird maps, horrible spells, and suddenly you're having to dive back into disguise menus like a mad scientist, ripping up intestines with your hands, trying not to think too hard about the fact that this might be the real game, not the tactics side of Disgaea. And if it is, and you're playing a game about navigating menus, what does that say about you? It's fine. Don't worry about it. Look, you stole that wicked gun off the boss, right? Well, why not dive into the item world inside that gun and level up the gun? And then you can give it to the overlord of the gorgeous netherworld on your team and she'll be great and she'll be kissing people and gunning people down. And look, now you're fighting on a giant cake. Imagine if you found a cake on one of the monsters here because then you could enter the cake inside the gun. Quins. And with that, you Quins. could- Quins. Quins, you are right. Do you, want a, do you want a cup of tea or anything? Yes, wait. Is this still Cool Ghosts? You, you've just been playing Cool Ghosts. Disgaea 6, Cool Ghosts. The one that lets you simulate a real world netherworld. For more Disgaea 6 tips and tricks, please check out our fan site, www.coolghosts.net. And if you enjoy the Disgaea related work we do, feel free to support us on our Disgaea related Patreon, coolghost.net slash Patreon.